In this video, we will focus on separation of insoluble solid from a liquid. Now let's say you are really hungry and are craving badly for a bowl of hot steamed rice. And before steaming, you gotta wash the rice. You stir the rice and pour away the water. You add water again for a second wash. Now you may choose to simply pour the water away for a second time, but you know that by doing that, a little amount of water will remain in the bowl. Now you being the meticulous chemistry student, decided to pour the mixture into a kitchen sieve to get rid of all the water. Now you do realize when we wash the rice in water, the rice did not dissolve in the water. This is because rice is insoluble in water. We can simply use a kitchen sieve to separate rice and water because the size of a rice grain is bigger than the whole of the kitchen sieve. Now the act of separating insoluble solid from a liquid is called filtration in chemistry terms. Now let's say we have a mixture of sand and water. If sand is added into water, sand does not dissolve at all, just like rice. Hence, sand is insoluble in water. To separate sand and water, we can use the physical method filtration, just like how we separate rice and water. However, the size of each sand grain is small, smaller than the holes of the kitchen sieve. If we pour the mixture, both sand and water will flow through the sieve. So what shall we do? We will pour the mixture through the filter paper. Now the filter paper acts as a sieve. There are small pores on the filter paper. Now the size is so small, only water can pass through. The solid particles that are bigger than the pores of the filter paper will not be able to do so. Pour the mixture into the filter paper. You will realize sand will remain in the filter paper. Water will flow through into the conical flask. Upon filtration, the solid that remains on the filter paper is called the residue. In this case, sand is the residue. The liquid that passes through the filter paper is called the filtrate. In this case, water is the filtrate. Now what if we have a mixture of sand and copper 2 sulfate solution? How do we separate this mixture and achieve sand and copper 2 sulfate crystals. Think about it. I will go through with you in the upcoming video. Now if you find this video useful, like the video and share with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more chemistry learning videos. Have fun learning chemistry and I will see you soon.